Hey guys, how you doing? And welcome to another week of game design at Peabody College. Yay, game design, all right. Okay, so this is the information that's posted on the website this week. Of course, I'm gonna put the Monday information up uh, on Monday and then later on in the week, I'll update the Wednesday information. And of course, the video I'm filming now will appear in this area right here. Um, but let's get started up here at the top. We do have presentations that uh, you guys continue to need to do uh, based in the presentations area here. If you go to game design, it'll tell you when your presentations are due. Um, we have Terry with a presentation due on Monday. And let's see, uh, Ben McRae on Wednesday. And of course, what I'm asking you to do is post your presentation in your Google Drive folder. I'll go ahead and link to it uh, so that everybody can see them and give you some feedback. Now, um, some presentations that were posted from last week are here uh, by Blake, Caleb, and Michael. Uh, Tim sent me one, but uh, I, I emailed him, and we need to change the permissions on that so everybody can see it. So that'll be coming soon. In fact, when you check back on this website, this may be an actual link. But what I would like you to do is go ahead and visit these presentations, uh, go ahead and view them, and then log into the class website here and go to the website form and give these folks some feedback on their presentation because they've done a nice job. So you can go to the website forum here and scroll down and you'll see that here I've given uh, some feedback to the folks who have done the presentations that we posted. So please do that. I'm sure they'd appreciate hearing your constructive criticism. Uh, now, uh, obviously we have a deadline of April 8th, which is this Wednesday, to get your game graphics and rules uh, uploaded to the uh, Game Crafter website so we can order those games. Of course, the rules, you don't need to upload the rules if you're not gonna print a booklet. You can just print those out on a, a printer, but uh, the game graphics definitely you're gonna have to upload. Um, of course, any questions or problems you have, you can email me or put them in the website forum, and that way I can answer them for everybody. Uh, now we do have uh, an article here. Uh, this one is about Amazon who has moved into game design. Um, so, you know, uh, not just streaming video games anymore, but actually making them. This has been uh, a while that they've been developing this. And of course, Amazon is infusing millions of dollars in the process. So they're de destined to become a big player in the business. So check out that article. Um, okay, now, um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you today about was preparing the graphics for uh, the game crafter. So two of the types of graphics that you'll do for sure, almost all of you are game boards and game cards. Um, so I've got some files up here uh, that we can look at. Now, of course, you can create your cards or your boards in programs like InDesign or um, Photoshop or Illustrator. And I've got an example of a game board created in Illustrator and some game cards created in Photoshop. So, of course, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the Game Crafter website and log in and um, download their template. Right, so let me go ahead and go to the Game Crafter website. Um, I'll go to Make Games and My Games, and of course, you know, I would log into my specific game here, but I'll just go to this one. And let's say that I want to make a folding game board, so I'll go into Folding Boards. Uh, let's say I want to make a quad fold game board. Then here are my uh, links uh, to download the templates. Right. So, for example, I made um, a folding game board in Illustrator. It's actually a six-fold game board as opposed to a four-fold, and I downloaded this template, right? Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So in Illustrator, here is my uh, game board. Now, uh, this is the template that you download. It has, um, you know, information here, which is the guidelines text, right? And uh, that tells you what the border is, where the safe zone is, where the cut line is. So basically, if you want your graphics to go all the way to the edge, you need to take them all the way to the end of where this gray area is, where the black line is. The red line is the cut line, and the blue dotted line, let me zoom in here a bit, is the uh, safe zone. So your graphics are gonna go all the way to this black line here, 
They're going to be cut. The board's going to be cut here at the red line. And anything you don't want to accidentally be cut off, you need to keep inside the safe zone, which is this dotted blue area. Now, um, for my game board that I'm making here, uh, one of the things that I did is I uh, created the board itself on a new layer. And uh, this board may look a lot like an overhead view of a golf course, which, of course, it was. I, uh, I went to my favorite vector site, vectz.com, got a graphic for a golf course because uh, it was the closest thing to what I needed, put it in here, took out the, you know, the hole and, and the flag and the, the water trap and all that. And now I'm going to customize it for my game. Uh, now, the next thing that I did was I wanted this to be a game where the tiles that you moved on were hexes. So I made a, a layer of hex tiles, and uh, that's what this is. And of course, I made sure that these hex tiles were the same size as the hexes, the physical hex cutouts you can buy on Game Crafter uh, in case I wanted to um, put little physical hexes in there. And, you know, the way I did that was I simply downloaded their hex tile template and measured that and, you know, made a design. So, for example, um, in... Illustrator here, you can make a hex tile that's uh, any size you want, or hex shape, I should say. And so if I downloaded the template from uh, Game Crafter for what's called their a small punch out, which is a hex shape, I could then draw a little uh, design like this and until it fit their hex shape and then use that to create this whole hex design for the board. Um, so that's what I did. And so this would be my finished graphic. I would, uh, you know, uh, with a few more revisions, I could export this as a, a JPEG or a ping file uh, using the artboard and then simply upload that to the Game Crafter website. You know, you might start off by adding a placeholder and then uh, clicking here to add the face, what's called the face of the game board. And then you would upload that, you would proof it, and then it would be good to go. Don't forget, you can choose what kind of finish you want. Uh, matte finish is, is really a flat finish, and then these other finishes cost a little extra money. Okay, so like I said, um, well, this one happens to be a quad fold, ga quad fold uh, game board. I happen to have just shown you a six-fold game board. It's a little longer, right? And it costs more. I think the difference is ridiculous. I think it's $10 for uh, this bad boy, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, $10. And then I think that the six fold is like $20. Yeah, it's insane. So much more. Anyway, um, but that's how it is. Now, let's jump over here to um, talk about cards. So over here in Photoshop, I have some examples of some simple cards I made just using black and white silhouettes. These are supposed to be monsters, right? And what I did was I made all my cards on the same template. Right. And so what I did was let me go ahead and turn off this first card here. If I can find it. There it is. Uh, and I have a white background here. And so what you see here, this is the card template that I downloaded from uh, the Game Crafter. Now, of course, when it first came in, it was um, it was portrait, which means straight up and down. So uh, if I want to go to image rotation and do 90 degrees counterclockwise, um, it's going to go ahead and flip that. This is the way that it came in. Of course, the same deal here. If you want your color to go all the way to the edge, you fill in this uh, gray area with the color and go all the way to the black line here. The red line is the cut line. Uh, and then the blue dotted line is what's called the safe zone. you got to put all your artwork in that area. Now, I knew I wanted to create horizontal cards. So, you know, I, I just simply rotated this 90 degrees. And then each one of these little folders here is uh, basically a different creature. So I put a white background here. Uh, looks like I've still got something else open there. Let me see if I turn by around it. Got. Oh, it looks like there's two things turned on in here. So, oops. Yeah, there we go. Um, so there you go. So now I have this. And uh, by the way, when you're covering up your template, one way that you can still see where the lines are are to create what's called guidelines. So you can show your rulers here, um, you know, view rulers, and then you can click on the rulers uh, with your move tool here and drag down guidelines. And so what I do is I create guidelines while I can see this uh, template. So if I turn my guidelines on, 
you can see I have some guidelines here. Um, most of my guidelines are just showing where the safe area is so that I can make sure that my uh, creature is in the safe area there, that he'll get printed without being cut off. But then I have an extra guideline here that shows how tall the text is supposed to be. So when I have the template covered, uh, I can still see that I'm uh, inside the save zone for my creations. Now, of course, when you do export the final artwork, you do want to turn off this template so that you don't accidentally get any of that showing up in your artwork. Now, I have a bunch of files here. Like I said, each one of these is a different creature, right? And what I would do is I would export each of these as its own individual ping or JPEG file. So, you know, save this to a JPEG or a ping format. You could call this, you know, uh, monster card Colvig and save that bad boy. And then you could come back here, turn that off and turn on the Warp Monk and save that. And then you'd have a little folder full of your files, which you could then go to um, the Game Crafter and upload. So if I go back here to uh, decks, and in this case, I'm using a poker deck. And then I can add a placeholder card and um, you know, it wants to know what the back of the card looks like. So I could upload the artwork for the back of the card here. I can give my name, uh, my deck a name, like monster cards or something like that. Um, and then I can add a placeholder here. Uh, oops, sorry, let me undo that. Well, it won't let me undo that. Uh, let me delete this bad boy. Okay. So um, here's the back of the card and um, I can click edit cards. And then it's it's in here that it will allow me to create a placeholder. Okay, so here's the placeholder, right? And what I can do here is click here and grab that first card that I made and upload it. And then, uh, you know, once that's good, uh, I can add a placeholder uh, for another card. So uh, just for grins, let me go ahead and... and uh, now, here's something else that's a bit of a trick. If you do make your cards horizontal like this, you have to actually uh, rotate them back into vertical before you upload them because uh, it only takes vertical cards. So uh, I would go, um, let's see, uh, image, uh, image rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, so let's go ahead and save these cards. So I'm just gonna save this uh, on my desktop. I'm gonna save this as double A uh, Warb Monk and uh, save it as a just a JPEG and uh, save that. Okay, and then we'll save a second one. Uh, we'll go back to this Colbig here. File, save as double uh, A Colbig. I'm just doing the double A so it comes up at the top of my list of files. Uh, JPEG on the desktop. Okay, save. Okay, so those are my two files. So now I can go uh, back to the Game Crafter site uh, for what's called the face of the card. Um, that's the artwork side. So we're looking for double A something. See, and I have so many double A's because I'm always trying to get up here to the top. Okay, double A, uh, coal big. So we upload that and then we can preview it. Notice that this shows you uh, the area that gets cut out. And then you can see what the card looks like. And of course you can approve this card. And you need to uh, be sure and approve all your artwork because it can't be printed before it's approved, right? Um, oops, let's see what I did. Let me go back. Uh, oh my gosh. Um, Let's see if this is still active here. I clicked on a few links. What happened to my links? Oh, there they are. Okay. So I can click edit cards. There it is. There's a the Colbig, right? Now, if I want to, I can go the, ahead and give this a name, Colbig. And, uh, you know, I'm good there. Now, this is the the card once, like I said, I have to approve it, right? Now, this is all uh, part of the poker deck. Now, if I want to add another card in this poker deck, I can go ahead and add a new placeholder. Then I can click here, and now we've got to get that Warb Monk card, uh, which, okay, that's gonna be fun. Let's see, finding the double A Warb Monk. Oh my God. So at this point, uh, maybe I type in AA Warb Monk. Oh, there it is. Okay, click on that, open. 
Okay, and there he is, and I can call him Warb Monk, right? Warb Monk. Okay, and he's good, right? Now, of course, like I said, all these have to be approved uh, in order to be printed. Now, this is the what's called the face side of the cards, but we also have the back of the cards. If we go to the Poker Deck, uh, if we just click on the uh, the term Poker Deck here, it's going to take us back to the back of the cards. And this is where we would upload the artwork for the back of the card. And, and this would be on the back of all of the cards. Now, um, if you wanted to, I suppose you could go crazy and put different artwork on the front and the back, but most of us aren't going to do that. Um, so let's see what this would look like. So let me uh, let me quickly grab the back uh, of the card so I can show you that upload. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened uh, this card here. This is the back of a card. And so I'll go ahead and save that course uh, in something like the JPEG or the ping format on my desktop, double A back dot JPEG. And uh, I'll go here, click there. Now we got to, what's, what are the odds that I'll be able to find this? Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, double A back. And there it is. You can preview that, right? So now I'm well on my way to uh, being able to finish off a whole deck here. Um, if I want to, you know, this is obviously the back of this particular deck. And then you click in here to put the, all the face cards in. And then if you want an, a different type of deck, you just add another placeholder here. And now you put the back of that card deck and then all the face cards in here. Um, now, by the way, at some point when you make cards, they say, you know, do you want this nice finish on the cards? And if you've got it, you know, it's, it costs a few cents more. If you've got it in your budget, it does make the cards look nicer. So, you know, you can definitely do that. Okay, uh, one other thing I want to talk about is um, the game boxes, because those are a little challenging. So let me go ahead and I'm going to pause this recording and open up a game box file. And then I will show you uh, what we can do with that. Okay, I'm back with a couple of game box files for you to look at. And uh, let me go back into the Game Crafter website here so we can take a look at the game boxes. So let's see, go up here to boxes and there's a bunch and they can be kind of confusing at first. Um, the one that I settled on for that I thought was appropriate for most games was this large retail box. It seems to be a, about the size where you could fit um, like a printed eight and a half by 11 set of rules in there. And of course your game board and other things. And you can add a placeholder in here. Now keep in mind that, uh, you know, you have templates for all of these things. Um, and if we click here on say the Photoshop template and hit okay, um, we're going to, it's going to open up and here is the large retail box. Now, it used to be that they had uh, a couple of different templates for this, but now they have just one. Um, and and the reason is because the basically the box top and the box bottom are sort of identical. So what you can do is you can use this file to design the top of the box and then save it and then uh, you know throw away all the graphics, put a new set of graphics on there, and save it as the bottom of the box. And that's essentially what I've done on these two files here, box bottom and box top. So here, of course, is the template that they give you. Of course, you know, what I would do is go in there and put in my guidelines to uh, help me see, you know, where everything is when I turn this, this particular layer off so that I can put my artwork in. Um, now, this artwork I'm about to show you, that was this was done over a long period of time and there were a couple of people contributing to it. Um, a friend of mine who I work with in Japan did the artwork for the dragon and uh, some other people did the artwork for some of the characters. So there were several people working on this and we, we worked on it for uh, a, a long period of time, as I said. So uh, that's why it looks the way it does. But let's, let's go ahead and go over here. Let's go to box top. And this is the uh, box top. Now, let me uh, remind you here of what the... Um, what the template looks like. So this middle section here, of course, is the top of your box. And then these are all the flaps on the sides, right? And really, you're just putting artwork in these rectangular sections 
because these other flaps are meant to construct the box. Like these little flaps fold in and that gets glued over. So it's really these four rectangles on the sides and then in the center, which is where you want to put your artwork. So you can see that for ours, we just took uh, the logo and, you know, printed it on each of those sides with a different character on it. And then, of course, we put the, the bulk of our time into making a cool looking piece of artwork here on the front of the game box. So there's the dragon my friend did and I made that logo and I kind of put everything together. Notice I have things here like the name of my company and, um, you know, uh, what ages uh, this game is meant for and how many people can play it. Usually you also put um, how long it's going to take to play somewhere on that box. So that is the uh, front of the box. And once again, or the top of the box, here are the guidelines that I made to help me um, with that, you know, because that's lining up with a lot of the lines that I need to uh, be aware of. And then, so I saved that as box top, and then I made another file, box bottom, you know, same, same template. And then this is what the bottom looks like, and you can see I've got all the same kind of lines going on here. And here we have things like, you know, the logos on the sides. Keep in mind that, you know, uh, the logos on the sides on the bottom of the box are going to be seen, you know, these tabs are going to fold up, if you know what I mean. And so uh, this has to be right, uh, it has to be placed in such a way that it can be read right side up. Uh, whereas this one, notice that the logo is going the other way because this flap is going to fold down because this is the top. And this is the bottom. So, but quite frankly, after I did this, I realized that uh, since these, since the box top and the bottom sat right next to each other, there's really no point at putting the logo on both the bottom and the top. So uh, when I reprint this, I'll just get rid of the logos on one of these sides, probably the bottom, and then that'll be just plain blue, and then you'll be able to see these. Um, but anyway, uh, other things that uh, I put on the back of the box. Here's, you know, once again, how old you have to be to play it or who it's designed for, how many players, and then here's the thing about how long it takes to play. Here's a brief summary of the game, and then uh, some of the card backs, some of the card fronts, and, uh, you know, uh, once again, another summary of, of what you're doing in the game. This is actually a free photo that I got of some people playing a board game, and I just kind of comped my board in there and my cards. If you look carefully, you can see it looks kind of fake. Like this one's just standing up uh, in an unnatural way, right? I used Photoshop to, you know, flatten all these things out. So if you didn't know any better, you might take a quick look at that and think, oh, there they are playing the game. But really, it's just a, a faked photo. But I just wanted a placeholder there of some people playing the game. And then I also listed uh, all of the, uh, you might call them ingredients, but the components uh, that come in the game right there. So uh, once again, that is the back. And of course, we always have the guidelines to help us out. So it coordinates with this. Always keeping track of things like the safe zones, which are those uh, dotted lines, so you don't put your artwork past that. And of course, the red lines, if you want your artwork to go to the edge of the box, you have to continue it out into the gray areas, which is why uh, the blue of mine goes all the way out, right? Um, so once again, uh, there's the bottom of the box, uh, there's the top and you guys, you know, obviously can make whatever you want. It's just important. You want your boxes to look good. So, uh, make sure that you understand these templates and how they're set up, uh, you know, read all the information, um, and set them up properly so that your, uh, game boxes will look good. Okay. So, um, that's it for me today. Um, I sent you guys an email. Uh, asking for one member of each team to write me and email me this week and let me know how the team's doing, if all the members of the team are still contributing. Uh, I just kind of want to know what's going on. I also want to know if you think uh, you'll be able to get the game done uh, and uploaded by this Wednesday or if you think you're going to need some more time. And also how many of your teams have uh, uh, created games in Tabletop Simulator or if not that, Steam Workshop or what are you doing to uh, play test your games. Now, I also made a mention in the email of if anybody is having any trouble uh, completing this class, they're having trouble with, uh, you know, access, internet access or computer usage or not having the programs. If you think this, uh, 
this class is going to be hard for you to finish, but you need to email me right away so we can make some arrangements. Um, I'm hoping that we can get everybody through this class. That's the plan. Uh, and as long as you're uh, sticking with your team and working on the game, uh, that's exactly what's going to happen. But if that's not the case, uh, let me know and we'll make accommodations. Okay, so that is it for today. I will uh, put another video up on Wednesday. So have a great week. Thanks.